Hi, I'm Jason Jertich, and this is The Mobile Philosopher. In this video, we're going to see a little bit more about how to use Google Forms as quizzes. So here, we're first going to go to New to open up a new Google Form. Go down to More here, and then to Google Forms. Now that we're in the Google Form, we can see that we can change the title. These two here are semi-connected, so I can go up here and click on Test, for example, type it rather. Jump out, it'll click, it'll change the test here. Then here, if I go here and space two to change the title, you can see that this one will remain the same and this one will change to test two. What do the students see? Test two. What does drive, what is the title and drive? In test. So just make sure you know that this is what the students see. So this is more important in this case in regards to titles. Second thing we're gonna do here is go to the configuration here of settings. So we can change this thing to a quiz. So we're going to go here to quizzes and we're going to make this a quiz. As you can see, we have new options here, which is we can see the options as releasing grades immediately after each submission, meaning the students will automatically see what they got from their quiz, or we can say later and manual, which is typically what you want to do if you don't want the kids to copy the answers by screenshots or something similar. So it's better just leave it later. And then here, depending on what you want the students to see, you can have uh, see the missed questions, correct answers, or point values, and we will see how these things work right now, but we'll leave all these check marks for now. We'll click on Save here, and this now transforms this into a quiz. Let's go back in here just to see the rest of the options here. We have Restrict to the Schools. So this is very important if you don't want the exam to be public, so we're going to click on this guy. And then collect email address. This was something that was direly missing the last time that Google had allowed us to do these types of things. And so now we can do this automatically. We do not need to have a question asking for the student's name with this is more than sufficient. And then down here, respond receipts. We're gonna leave this as blank. This is what caused a lot of problem with professors beforehand, which is this was automatically checkmarked, which means the students could receive a copy of their exam. So we're gonna leave this unchecked. And then down here, we can say limit to one response. If you don't want the students to keep on repeating the exam, then we'll just leave it as one. You just have to make sure you have good enough internet for this because sometimes uh, the internet might fail and the kids might have to do it again and it causes Google a little bit of a problem. So just make sure you keep that in mind. Respondents can edit after submit. We definitely don't want that. If it's an exam, if you want the kids to learn actually from their errors, then you can have them do it again and put edit after submit. And then see summary charts and text responses, where it, unless you want the students to know how well they did in comparison to everyone else, it's better to leave that off. So with that, we can leave like that. And then finally, we have the presentation here. And again, this, we have show progress bar. If it's a long exam, it's important to click on this. The students know exactly how much more they have to finish. Then shuffle question order. That means to make sure the students do not get the same order of questions, this also is tremendously helpful to make sure that copying and plagiarism are not as uh, easy to do. And then down here, and you can put your own response here when they, when they finish off the confirmation message, you can put whichever you want here and it makes no difference. You can say thank you very much, you can say response is recorded, whatever you want you can leave here. If you don't, it just says your response has been recorded. Then we're gonna click on save. And now we're ready to go. So now our form has been formally transformed into a quiz. And so now we can start looking at all the options here. So under this, we can say, for example, this is a math test and leave it like that. Or you can leave generic general instructions for the entire exam here as well. I typically use this area for instructions. Then we have the questions. We have different types here. If we go under multiple choice, we see short answer paragraph. This is like a one or two word type of answer. This is a sentence or more than one sentence type of answer. Multiple choice, to choose, the student can choose only one option. Check boxes, you can choose more than one option and drop down is exactly the same as multiple choice. The only difference is that this is more used when you have, for example, more than six options. Sometimes I'll have exams or exercises where there's 15. So that might sound exaggerated, but it can happen. So you might want to use drop down instead of multiple choice in this case. Linear scale is on a scale from 1 to 10. If you want the students to choose from 1 to 10, you can do that. And multiple choice grid is, uh, we're going to leave this for another video. And typically, these first five are the ones that are going to be used the most. But if you want Google to automatically correct things, you need to use these three here. These you can use if you use another way of doing it, which is using the spreadsheet to correct the answers. I will show this in another video. But for now, the only three that Google will automatically correct are these three here when you're using 
its options for doing a quiz. So just keep that in mind. These are the three options you have when you're doing, doing a quiz. So we're going to see how all three look. I'm going to use the multiple choice here. Here we'll put a two times two just for a simple exam. Here we'll put, for example, three and then enter, four and then enter, and six, for example, and then eight. Now, as you can see, we have another possibility of letting the students add other, which means they can write in an answer if, they, if one of these is not correct. So you can have that do that. But just keep in mind, this will not be automatically created by Google. As well, as you can see here, we can add an image to every single option and up here. So you can now add plenty of images everywhere to help clarify something that you are going to offer, whether it be an option or the question. So keep that in mind. It's also very, very helpful if it's something complex or mathematical that you need to show. So graphs and things like that you can add now with these images. Then we have down here, we want to put this on required, obviously. The question needs to be answered. If we don't put this, the student can skip it. And then here in the three bar, we have a couple other things. We have description, which is something that you can add here. Now we can add instructions. So we can say, what is the answer or whatever else you want to put in there. And then down here, we have the possibility of shuffling the option order, which we will also choose. So that, for example, student one is going to see option six as the first option, and student two, see, uh, option three as the second, for example. So these will all get mixed up as well, which is something very useful for an exam. And then go to section based on answer. Uh, there's a possibility of every skipping question. So if, I, if a student chooses option three, for example, I can skip another question in the list of questions that I'm going to offer and go to another one. And this we will also see in another video to see how to take better advantage of this. So this will be another thing we'll see later on. So after we finish that, then we go here to the answer key, and we need to find out which ones are going to be the right and wrong answers and give us our points here. So here we'll put, like, for example, one point, which is a simple one, and we'll say here that this is answer four. And as you can see, it corrects it here. And in the other checkboxes, you can actually have more than one answer correct, so that's also good. Then you can add answer feedback. So you can say here, so what exactly do I want to put when it's correct and what exactly do I want when it's incorrect? And I can even add a link here for example, to a video or whatever, to clarify why something is right, and then the video can clarify this point here, for example, YouTube, whatever. So if I go here, it'll say link to, and you just put whatever link you want, and then the text you want here to add. So that, those are very nice options here to really give rich feedback to the kids after they finish if you want to give the exam back and not just show them on the screen. Again, if you want to have the kids receive everything, that's wonderful. Just keep in mind that uh, some of the kids may take screenshots or take a photo or something else. So if you want to use an exam constantly in the future, you need to make sure not to offer everything to the kids. Otherwise, they're going to be able to copy that and pass it on to their friends and other students. Um, if that is what you want to avoid, then you need to make sure that you don't share everything. So here we have edit question again. We go back. We have a check mark indicating that this one is the right answer. So that will be taken into consideration. And then, so as not to redo this whole thing again, we're just going to put a duplicate here. And here we'll just put, for example, let's put a three so that we can just add this guy as the check mark. So as you can see here, this one's check marked. I had to go back into the answer key and click on this guy here so we don't have the same problem and get rid of this one. And as you can see, actually, funny enough, it's even allowing me here to offer more than one option as a correct option. So just keep that in mind. It makes no difference of the three types we showed. You can choose as many right answers as you want. Again, we'll just leave it as one point, and then going back to edit. And then down below, we're going to, again, if I want to delete this, I can just click on delete here, but it's not necessary. So here, we want to change this guy, actually, to a different format. So we're going to put this as dropdown, so you can see the differences when we look at the preview. And then we're going to duplicate this guy. As you can see, stayed like this, but we're going to put this as a check mark, check boxes here. And then we're going to change this, for example, we'll leave it as uh, four. Okay. So we leave it at check marks. Everything else stays the same. We go back to the answer key. We're going to change this now to eight and get rid of this one. But as if, because these are check marks, uh, check boxes, we can easily have more than one answer correct, and Google will respect that. So just keep that in mind. So we have our, our three questions here. And you can have as many questions as you want. So for example, if I go back to this one, and if I wanted to go here, go to section based on answer, I can see, as you can see here, if I chose three, then I can skip down to some other parts. And these are, are by sections here. 
And this is another thing I'm going to show you right now. If we, if we finish this off, and we, and we had the, the plus sign here, we have this is adding a question. But then we have other options here. We have add title and description, add image, add video, and add section. And this is the strongest one. So let's say after this I want to add a section. What this does is separate the questions. So instead of seeing all three questions in one web page, we can divide them up. And this helps tremendously, especially if you don't want the kids to copy, so that on one screen they're going to see question one, on another screen they'll see question three, et cetera, et cetera. That's why it's important not to number the questions. If you try to number the questions, then the students are not going to know exactly why they're all disordered. So it's important not to number the questions so that they can be in any order that you want, especially if you've chosen that. So here, I can go here, click on this guy, and then click on another section. And now I have these things separated question by question, which is also very helpful, like I said, to avoid copying and plagiarism. So I would highly suggest doing this when you are designing your exam. So now we have three questions. They're all obligatory. We know this by the little red star here stating that this is the correct way. These six bars here, what this indicates is that I can actually hold this and then move it around. So this is the possibility of moving these questions around. That's why they're there. And then here, as you can see, as I mentioned before, you can say continue to the next section or I can skip sections. Or if I go here again, I can say instead of going to the next one, I can just skip down to three. So it depends on how you want to design this to allow the students to skip around the exam or put harder questions and easier questions within the same exam. And so that some students see the harder ones and some students see the easier ones without having to create multiple exams. So this helps tremendously as well. Again, we'll go through this in our video. So as you can see here, we have our three uh, simple math questions here. If we go up here, as you can see, we're going to see that we have a preview option here. And this preview option allows us to see what the student is going to see when they look at the answer. So we're going to click on this just to see what this shows. And as you can see, this is what the student is going to see. So I have the possibility of seeing the answers here. So we're just going to choose a couple and see what happens. We'll make this one wrong and go next. Then we're going to choose this one. Here it says drop down, as we mentioned before. So in this one, we'll choose the right and go to next. And this one as well, we're going to choose correctly. Now, again, as you can see, the student could have chosen more than one option, and the instructions could have said this. You may choose more than one option. It would have been fine. So we have this, and then we're going to click on Submit to see what happens. After we click on Submit, it's going to say your response has been recorded. Remember, this sentence here you can change and edit to whatever you wish. So now let's go back to what we had before and see exactly what this did. So as you can see here, we have responses, and we have responses one. So let's go to the next section here, which is our responses. And this response is going to give me a summary of all the students. So if I have one, 10 students or 100, all of this will come out here indicating to you how many people actually got a certain question right or wrong. So it gives you a tremendous amount of information in this case. And then up here, I can go to individual, and I can see exactly what the student did. So here, as you can see, it marked this one wrong. It marked this one right. It marked this one wrong. And it tells me uh, down here how many points here. We said, OK, we have two points out of three. And so it basically gives you a nice summary of what the students can do. And in here, I can move myself back and forth from the students, or I can choose a drop-down list and skip to the students I want. So you have both options to skip to one student or just to go one by one here. I can print this out, obviously, or I can erase, I can delete the response of the student. And here, you can see I can accept responses, meaning if, it's, if the exam is already passed, I can block this so the students cannot put any more. And if we go here, we have get email notifications for new responses. So if a student adds a response, I can get an email notification to find out if the student actually did that or not. Select response destination, so I can see where, if I want a spreadsheet for this. Download the response to CF, is, is CSV which is also good, print all responses and delete them. So the select response destination is exactly the same as this guy here. It means it allows me a spreadsheet to see all of this in something more formal. And this is what I use actually to correct answers that are open. So we're going to just click on this so you guys can see what it looks like. It says create a new spreadsheet. We're going to say test responses. It tells me to learn more if I want or select an existing one and just add it there. We're just going to create this one. So we're going to click on this and see. So right now, in, in, sometimes, for example, if the internet is not working or whatnot, it, it'll be trying to reconnect itself. But it's, it's linking, so it's OK. So now it's, uh, the internet's uh, doing its thing here. This might take a few minutes. So OK, it was faster. So as you can see here, it gives us the possibility of seeing the answers of the students in this case. And it gives us columns so that we can actually modify, manipulate, or query the information that comes in from 
the exam. So this is excellent. It also gives me the exact time and date of when the student actually finished the exam. So all these things are actually extremely helpful in the end when the, fin the student actually finishes. So uh, going back to our exam here, because we're going to talk about spreadsheets uh, actually in, a, in a, another video in more depth. As you can see, so th these are the things that we have uh, as, as possibilities here. Going back to questions, we've already seen everything that's possible here. So um, the, the possibilities here of, of doing exams are, are extremely amazing. And up here we have a few other options here that are rather secondary. You can change the color or even change the background of the Google form here if you so wish and other things like that. And if we go here to the three dots, you're going to see a couple more options, which is we can make a copy of this, move that trash, get a pre-filled link, which offers all the options already pre-filled. You can add people to help you edit this exam so you're not doing it by yourself. Script editor, which we'll see in another exam, and add-ons that also affect the way the forms work. So if I click on this, it'll open this up here, which gives you uh, various options. And again, this all depends on how fast your internet connection is. So if it doesn't, if it takes too long, we're just going to skip it. Okay, it's coming out here. It gives you the possibilities of adding extra stuff. So I can add a math graphs, for example, in this uh, choice eliminators, so that when one choice has been chosen, the other, the that choice disappears from the list for other people who are taking the exam, for example. We have email notifications. We have a whole bunch of stuff that we can uh, directly or indirectly connect. We can even use this for Slack, for example. So there are various things you can use here, and it's good to run, uh, go over these and just to find out what are possibilities that you can connect or relate uh, Google Forms to in relationship to this stuff. So, And that's, that's pretty much the, the global vision of this. Uh, obviously, at the end here, you can choose a video. Just keep this in mind that the videos are only YouTube videos for now. This is not a Google video, so it's, just, it's, it's a slight complication. So you'll have to choose or upload a video to YouTube and then make it uh, unlisted if you so wish, if you don't want anything public, but you're going to have to keep that in mind. And then here with the send button, it gives you the options of sharing it. So we have email here to choose subject and message, include form and email, so that the form actually comes out in the email instead of the students or someone opening it up in a new page. And here we have the links. You can actually share this link or shorten it to such a way that you can just share this faster and then put a, and copy it. You can share it to Google Plus here if the students have that. And then you have embedding. You can also actually embed this in another website, for example, Google Sites in this case. So you have quite a few things here that help tremendously to do this well. You have automatically collect response again here, and that's all we need. So you know, we can just uh, click on copy there, for example, or just go here. And what normally I do, I just click on this, shorten this, and then I click on copy so I can have it ready to go in this case. So after finishing all that, you just send that. You can paste it into an email or paste it into a Hangouts, whatever you wish, so that the students can receive that link and you will be set to go in regards to your forms in this case. So in later videos, we're going to see more precisely how to use Google Spreadsheets to correct uh, open answer questions. And then in other videos, we'll see how to take a uh, a major advantage of this type of possibility of jumping questions, things like that. So if you have any doubts or anything else in relationship to this video, please put them under the video in the comments, and I'll be more than happy to respond to them. Thank you very much, and take care.